Good morning, good day, good afternoon. My name is Alexander Morose, and today I will go ahead and introduce you to uh, my Alexander Morose uh, photo retouch, which is basic retouch that I'm always uh, using uh, for my photography, and uh, it's perfectly for my style. And uh, for for some of you who are not gonna like it, you know, you're welcome to the dislike dislike it. But, you know, I'm hoping that someone will underline some of the techniques that I'm using and uh, will have ability to apply those techniques in their photo retouch or the other uh, graphic design work. So, uh, as you can see, here is my latest photography in the end of 2010 for my album uh, Sweet Home Colorado. And 2010 and um, here is the final image and uh, at the resolution of 12 megapixels but it's unusual 12 megapixels as you see and you can see how clear it is and uh, at 50% and still clear at 66 percent and um, at 100 so the printing quality will be nice almost there is no noise going on over here so let me go ahead and show you my technique and you can use the Alexander Moreau's photo retouch technique uh, for your own uh, photography and uh, graphic design and also here is um, here is my latest and uh, the image by me as well and as again it's going to be part of a sweet home called Rada 2010 uh, by Alexander Morose and um, but have a look uh, who I captured look and this is this is going on 33% uh, how clear it is this is 50% how clear it is and this is with a Nikon D90 with my beautiful classic a portrait Nikon lens 35 millimeters by 70 up to 70 millimeters f 2.8 in 1992 that lens 94 that lens cost two thousand dollars and it's good for a film or digital as again if you're interested and if you're gonna find this tutorial using the keywords um, Nikon uh, 35 millimeters up to 70 millimeters f 2.8 what I'm thinking about this lens, I'm thinking this lens is beautiful. I purchased it used, unfortunately, because they didn't make it anymore for tons of money. And, uh, like, not tons, but like $600 almost. And, um, unfortunately, my lens has a little bit of distortion. And the um, photographer just play a joke with me. Well, you know, it's going to be on his soul. And I pay him real money as much as he asked me, and he gave me a little bit of a uh, defected product, but just a little, a little of the destruction on my images. And after editing, they disappearing. But anyways, and uh, this is the. It's going to be as again a sweet home called Ra, the 2010 album. And this is the 100% look. Look who it is. And look at that resolution of that image. It's around 22 megapixel with the 12 mega megapixel camera, and this is without the enlarging the image. It's an optical real resolution, which is good as 21 megapixel sensor, and it's beautiful. And find out how to do this type of work. Uh, you can follow my uh, panoramic, uh, my uh, not actually panoramic, but my double your uh, megapixels in your camera tutorial uh, over the YouTube check it out but as again I'm sorry for this long introduction some people may not liken it and uh, yeah I just decided to show you something before we're gonna move into the tutorial so you will know that I'm not just a joker out there I'm a photographer with the I would say seven years of experience okay thank you so much and I'm Nikonian right now just because I have a few nice lenses 
and I'm not buying camera just because the megapixels. Uh, actually, I do, but as well as I'm consider myself for a level of the noise and the upgradability for the lenses and stuff like this, and I decided to go with Nikon. But if I would start it right now, maybe, maybe, I'm not sure yet because I uh, didn't compare the best Canon camera right now on the market for myself for a couple of days to try and uh, uh, do a, a little um, experience with that and then compare it to my Nikon. But if I would go in today and buying the DSLR, I would go for Canon because they offering... Uh, more megapixels and I believe their noise level is about the same as Nikon what people were saying to me but I'm not sure again and this is a little introduction what kind of camera I suggest you if you will ask me to all right so here we go and um, how to create this image well basically what I did I, I went to file automate photo merge and um, I select layout another and basically this is uh, one of the I have the tutorial on how to do this so I'm going to be pretty quick if you want to watch the tutorial please make sure to watch the whole tutorial it's going to be the tutorial called double your camera megapixels by Alexander Moroz and what I did um, I'm gonna select three images that I get ready it's going to be this one, this guy, and this guy right here. Three of those images. I'm going to click OK. And basically, uh, it's going to give me that image. And then I'm going to edit, um, retouch it, I would say, just a little bit for my style. And I'm going to show you my basic uh, techniques. It's going to be amazing for folks who are the beginners out there and... Uh, yeah, I'm going to save you a lot of time. All right, I'm not going to use any key, um, shard keys, so everybody can do this. This is tutorial for everybody because um, I care about my subscribers, and some of them are not professional yet, as, as, as again, yet in photography. And look at this. See those two dots? It's a um, lens destruction. And yeah, so my tutorials are going, going to be very nice and educational. Thank you so much. So what I'm going to go, I'm going to, after it's going to create the image on your computer, it's going to take longer time when you're working with 12 megapixels. Over here, I'm having the i7 at 3.8 uh, overclock heavily at the 930, but with the 3.8, the maximum more clock. And I'm going to set it on Vinomius X, and it's going to be uh, quicker than it is right now because I'm going to set it for or 4.2 or 4.4 gigahertz but and um, for people uh, who with the slower computers it will take longer so after you see your image we're gonna go select we're gonna click all it's gonna select all we're gonna go edit we're gonna go edit and copy merged copy merged we're gonna click on that we're gonna go edit we're gonna click paste it's gonna bring you the image then we're gonna disable the other images does those masks we're gonna disable them and we're gonna call this guy right here we're gonna call him master it's always uh, good to have a habit name your layers it will show you how professional you are in Photoshop so let's go ahead and do that select the master then we're gonna click right click on it with your mouse click the duplicate late uh, layer and um, we're gonna call it master D which is duplicate and click OK then we're gonna disable the master just click on that eye and it's going to be invisible and then we're gonna click on the arrow tool and then we're gonna go ahead and click other select and uh, show transform controls we're gonna actually we're gonna go in here after that when we select the other select and uh, show transform controls 
spawner and it will give us ability to transform the image in real time. So we're gonna rotate it to make it even for the eye and for us the way we want to see that image. About so, I'm gonna click on that arrow again or on this check mark and I'm gonna click apply and it will uh, apply that rotation. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over here right click duplicate layer and I'm gonna call it master D duplicate and then I'm gonna say C color C correction and now I'm gonna work and I'm gonna remove the copy as syntax by double click on the image file you can rename it any uh, time you want it so D color correction you can name as as uh, as your uh, fill to for your abbreviations you can you can name your files like this like a programmer you can name it like duplicate and then color correction this is a good 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 way to name it as well it's called um, lowercase uh, camel as actually it's uh, not the lowercase it's a capital camel style okay you can do it like so so you will have a better idea what's going on as again it's up to you and I'm just sharing the experience and uh, uh, it's always good to name and always uh, good to be organized and I will learn it when I'm uh, when I start programming and the uh, more I'm moving into the developing and programming languages I'm learning that you need to be organized to accomplish something quicker and uh, bring better quality. So uh, we have master duplicate color correction. Uh, then we're gonna go image and uh, we're gonna go image size. We're gonna check our image size, which is like 20 megapixels over 20 megapixels, like about 22 megapixels over here, even more like 24, which is beautiful size. But unfortunately, we are going to cut this image. So um, before I'm gonna cut this image, I'm gonna correct the color, and um, because that's what this layer is for, and uh, I'm gonna go and uh, image, select the layer first, with, with what what we're working with, which is master duplicate color color correction. I'm gonna go image. I'm gonna go. It's always good to use the Adaton. It can bring you some nice. Um, nice effect to your images uh, uh, why I'm telling you this because I developed the image uh, um, editor myself it's called Moroz image editor and um, it's probably going to be available pretty soon as freeware for anybody to download it's going to work out uh, up to with 120 um, image graphics formats and it will give you ability to manipulate with your images and I have the other done on it's called other tune other color tune in my software and what it does it supplies some pretty cool things that I think will uh, make your image look better and I'm not sure what kind of formulas the in functions they're applying over here but let's try it and you will see um, that it's gonna bring some uh, different scene to our image but I don't want to make it the darker like so I like the way it was before so I'm going to remove it back. 